going on? Welcome back. Um, welcome to my new office. It's outside on this little mini deck we got going on here. Hey man, let's just get caught up, see what's going on, let you know what's going on with the car. If you saw my last video, we added the uh, BMR relocation brackets. Uh, it seemed to work a little bit. It got the car going straighter again. I'm not sure why it stopped going straight, but um, when you lay into it, it definitely goes straight. Our next steps to get the car to hook up, we're gonna look at some BMR drag springs. In fact, I got a set in already. Um, I thought I ordered the whole set, but um, uh, made a mistake. I just ordered the rear. We'll get those on within the next week. So those are a much different rating than what we have on there. I think, uh, well, what I have on there now are the Eibach Pro Street Springs and Struts. The rear, I believe, is rated around 250 per square inch, and the front is rated at 260 pounds per square inch. Now, the drag race springs will lower the car and it will also um, run a lighter spec on the spring. They're rated at, I believe, 150 pounds per square inch on the rear and a 160 on the front. They both will lower the car an inch and a half. Um, the difference between those and the Cobra Jet Springs, I think, are height. They are rated um, the same, 150 in the rear, 160 in the front. But I believe the rear of the Cobra Jet sits the car a little bit higher, maybe only lowers it either a half an inch or one inch, whereas the front, it will lower one and a half. Um, the good news is, for me, is that I can run these drag race springs um, using the same struts I have from Eibach. Um, I talked to Eibach about the setup, and they says all you have to do is raise it. So the uh, struts I have are adjustable. I can lower the car as low or get um, three inches out of the height. So I just need to raise the car back up. That preloads the spring, and then we should be good to go. I am not going to install those. I'm going to have Scotty's Auto install those for me. We are going to install the rear springs, and at the same time, because we have to remove the... Uh, rear sway bar we're going to add the rear sway bar relocation brackets so we can add if we want to go that way give us that flexibility a 15 inch wheel on the back that way we can get um, a normal tire behind there or slick if you will with a sidewall and help with some of that shock when you launch the car uh, on the upside of that too is i can get a taller uh, tire under there also i'm looking to get a 29 inch tire so I may keep my same rear gear it just depends on how the car reacts now as far as a shock setup it's not ideal what I have I have the Lakewood 5050 um, that's what's on there I'm gonna try that and see how that works uh, it doesn't does doesn't work out too well I'm gonna guess what I'm gonna go back and for the hell of it I'm gonna try the Ibach Pro Street shock just to see what that does um, why the Vikings um, are the top of the line they're the hot ticket I believe they have 18 preset settings um, they're pricey buggers uh, I, I think the first levels 200 bucks the uh, the upper levels 275 and, and it may go up from there I don't know so I'm just looking at cost and what will work so that's why we're going down that road um, as far as how we're approaching this set up so i'll let you take a look at the springs and a couple other things that uh we got coming up then we'll just talk about the draggy videos these are the bmr springs there's your part number bmr only has one drag race spring for the it's 2005 to 2014 mustang in this bugger right here so if you were to go online and search it um just go to bmr website um they pretty much sell at the same price as anybody else. Some of the other dealers, what they'll do, you get free shipping. I don't believe BMR offers uh, free shipping, but this is what it's what it looks like. Some of the other stuff I want to talk about that we're going to get into. Uh, we picked up some Meguiar's Ultra Finish Polish and a couple of mini buffers. These will go on a DeWalt drill. And this is a mini block. So what we're going to do is share and show the viewers, um, show you guys how to do some touch-up paint, block it out, buff it out, and uh, hopefully get it looking as new. So that'd be kind of cool. Right? So let's talk about these videos. 
I dug into the data a little bit and I'm gonna give you each photo um, of the draggy video and the times. Now we're specifically are looking at zero to 30 miles an hour and I'll tell you why. So the first draggy was 2.61 for the zero to 30 mile an hour. The second draggy was also, oh, I gotta look, look at my notes, 1.83 seconds. The third draggy, which was on blacktop without traction control, went, uh, well, I didn't, I didn't even play it out. It's 4.93, so as soon as the tire started spinning, I just backed right out of it. The last one um, was 0 to 30 was 1.88 seconds. Now, I'm gonna show you guys a speed box. is another GPS setup that I was running before I got to Draggy. It was set on eighth mile, but for whatever reason, it didn't complete its cycle. It stopped recording at 34 miles an hour. Now, this was on blacktop traction control on and if you hear me in my earlier videos I talked about hooking up on this blacktop out here this is also before my intake port and my e85 tune okay however it was with the light and flywheel one piece dry shaft and the Mickey Thompson ETs I went and I'm gonna show you that in that data it clocked me 0 to 34 miles an hour 0.99 seconds when this car hooks, um, this is this was the result. Now this car will give you G-forces, um, push you in your seat, and give you that thrill ride. I haven't been able to do that yet since we've made these mods. So hopefully we can get back there. Um, some of the other things I want to talk about. I'm gonna share with you guys. Very lucky. I was pulled over last week from my township police. We came back uh, in a couple other buds. We came back from a car show and uh, we were having some fun. That went on for a while. All good. They went to the right. I went straight because I was close to my house. My fun should have ended there. It did not. So what did I do when I turned on uh, the two lane highway to get me back home? I rolled into it kind of fast, ramped it up. 90 miles an hour and there's a cop sitting on the side of the road at that time it was too late i started breaking and he clocked me at 86 and 55. so what i want to tell you guys i'm damn lucky it was a humbling experience for me um very nice of the officer long story short his last words to to me were take the car home um, he knew where he lived because he's township, so he drives by here. Um, and he also said, if I, had a, if I had a car like this, I'd do the same thing. I'm not going to write you a citation. Take the car home. So um, I couldn't thank him enough. What I want to share is um, I don't want to see anybody lose their ride, reckless driving, get points, get hurt. Um, bad deal. It's a bad deal. Um, this was an eye-opener for me shook me up I want to tell you guys I do have a radar detector if I had it on it probably would have saved me right so if you're out there having fun um, I don't know what to tell you just be careful be aware um, nothing's fun you get into the system you get a big you know a big ticket you get your car taken away you lose your license reckless driving it's really bad so where am I going to be testing? I'm going to rethink this whole thing and trying to figure out where am I going to go and do I want the risk? I don't know. So it's all going to be touch and go. I'll probably go back and make that long drive to Mexico, a nice remote area, and uh, hopefully be okay. I am back. I moved. So a few days later since I've recorded the video, I'm going through editing and um, I left it off as testing in Mexico. 
Um, I also want to share, uh, there's an event that happened in Mexico. Um, it's pretty serious. Could have been much worse. And uh, it really put, uh, put us into a position, um, a lot of us that uh, go to Mexico, uh, it's not going to happen anymore. Um, it's going to become maybe a hot seat, we don't know, but um, we're not going to take those chances. So again, this was a situation where it just got out of hand. Um, unfortunate driver error maybe I don't know uh, we'll leave it at that however found a nice stretch of road <laughs> since all this um, where I'm going to be storing my B it's a half mile stretch black top and a nice remote location um, that uh, I think may work on the short term, hopefully long term. It uh, gets me out of the area and uh, it's not really heavily patrolled. So we think it can work out. We'll get back to the video. So anyways, to my viewers, guys, be careful. Um, you know, make good decisions. If you have not fun with your car, leave it at that. Don't keep pushing it because our luck's going to run out. So, this next vid's going to be we will install the rear springs. That's what's going to be coming up. That won't be till next weekend probably. Um, so, things are going to be calm for the next few days. Um, what else we got going on? That's it. And then we'll figure out where we can test the car and uh, see what impact it has against my control draggy uh, videos. All right, well guys, thanks for watching. Hope you liked the content and thanks to my new subscribers. One of the things I owe you guys is a good look at the car, a good list of the mods. We'll go through the mods so everybody knows what's there and uh, so get you close to the car, give you an idea what's on there, okay? Thanks guys for watching, have a great night. Take care.